Okay, thanks for joining me. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to film a wedding ceremony. Um, in my case, I film it on my own quite often, but there'll be some info in there that's valuable whether you're shooting in a team or not. There's quite a lot to cover, so what I've decided to do is just talk about how I approach it, and then as I'm getting to that point, maybe we can break into some other uh, edge case scenarios and whatnot. All right, so this is a conversation I have pretty much every well, twice a week with photographers, and that is, they'll say, where are you going to stand? Where are you gonna be? Um, and also, I found myself talking to new shooters and explaining how I do it as well, so why not make a video? All right, so, uh, yeah, like I said, let's just talk about how I would first approach that. We're in a car park, and this lane here, if you can see the faded lines, is gonna be my stand-in for an aisle. And if you can imagine that, so then the tree is the arbor and the couple's just standing on the curb just there. All right, uh, bare minimum, I would tell people, if you're gonna film a ceremony, uh, you do have to have tripods, it has to be on sticks. Because I've had to edit a few um, ceremonies where my shooter has used a shoulder rig. And by the way, I never said use a shoulder rig. I'm somewhat loose. I look at their stuff and they go, yeah, that's excellent, man. You just film the, the best way you know how because this looks great. Oh, hello. <laughs> it's a big puppy. Um, so then I think I've got to be a bit more strict and actually tell people you've got to use sticks for the ceremony. It can't move around crazy. And if you're on a shoulder rig or a gimbal as your main camera, you could never check your second camera because then you're gonna have to obviously run to that spot to check it so you're actually stuck if you have a shoulder rig that's my main concern with it okay so i would say bare minimum two tripods one either side now what i like to do if the ground is somewhat suitable like even grass as long as it's not too bumpy and there's not too many kids running around i like to use a surui and if you get a monopod make sure it can stand up on its own like that i like to use a monopod and a tripod. And the reason why a monopod is so convenient is I can actually stand in the aisle for when the bride comes down. So I'll just come back here. So if you can imagine, maybe where this line is with this tripod I've set up is where mum and dad's sitting. So this is the VIP section and the couple's right there. So what I like to do, and I think the main shot the main shot of this moment is the bride's face coming down, matched with the groom's reaction, all right? Anything else is a bonus. Walking behind, I'm not a fan of that. Um, this is the main shot, her face. Um, I've also seen photographers stand behind the groom right here, and he's getting over the shoulder groom and then the bride's face. I don't like that because I don't want to be in my own video and I don't want the photographer in my video really either. I think the best place for the main photographer, the main shooter, is to take this prime position here next to mum. He can get, well, well they could stand back and we'll talk about that in a second. You get the bride's face obviously, you get the groom's face, perfect. Um, if they stand here, and this is what we'll talk about every at the beginning of every wedding, where are you going to stand, blah blah blah. If this is my groom camera, which is the prime position for his face, it's facing him, I'll tell the photographer, look, you can have this prime spot and my second camera then, I'll move it to this side and it'll be a more side-on shot of the groom. It won't be directly um, on his face, but it does check a box. Um, your film aficionados will agree, they like to stick to a 180 rule, which means you're not crossing over this line like if there's a conversation, someone's facing that way, the second shot is someone facing that way. You don't have two people facing the same way. That's breaking what we call the 180 degree rule. I don't fuss too much about that, by the way, these little rules. I think audiences are becoming more clever. I'll just chuck that in. If you ever watch NFL, they're running one way, and then all of a sudden, he's running the same guys with the balls running that way. And it's because there's you know, uh, the same camera on both sides. And initially I was like, what? But then, you know, we're smart. The audience is getting smarter. We know it's just a camera on the other side. Um, don't ever have funny rules 
that inhibit your ability to get the best shot possible. I've overheard some funny conversations like, no, no, don't stand there, the 180 rule. And I'm like, bro, like his face is like right there. Anyway, like I said, there's a lot to cover. If I try to keep myself on the straight and narrow, this video won't be too long. So where was I? If there's one shooter and we'll get to two, if there's one photographer, and we'll get to two photographers in a minute, I will give the photographer the main spot. Then my second camera is there facing the groom and my main camera will be next to mum and dad of the groom and I'll say hello. I promise I won't be here long. I'll be skinny as, that's why I love this monopod. Set up my shot, it's really fast to set up. Bam, got it. When there's a handover, can jump to here once she goes past and don't trip over the dress. And there's your handover shot. Talk to the photographer again. Would you like me to be here for a bit? And before we start, I'll explain, I don't camp in the aisle. I just want to get the walk in and the walk out and the rings I'll be in the aisle. Um, so once there's a handover, then I stay here. This is what I recommend all videographers should do. Um, a two shot, pretty much. You could have another tripod set up here if you want. Um, it's all about how much gear you can carry to the ceremony. I'm carrying this and I'm carrying a, a gimbal as well, which can sling into the back of my bag for the exit. So this is my minimal setup. Um, the other workaround is you could go handheld for that um, aisle shot I was talking about. So let's just say you've got an A7 IV, which has brilliant active stabilization. You could have your two tripods already set up, one with the camera on it and one that's waiting for you. And then you can just uh, be small and nimble right here for the bride walking in. Why do I like being small and nimble? I've shot for a few people in Sydney here and some people who think that they're the best. And they do some good stuff, but it becomes all about them. And there's some big guys too. And I've seen some dudes with a tripod like what I'm using here. I've seen some guys set up the bride entry with a tripod. And I'm thinking, I was able to watch a few of these because I was live streaming. And that was very eye-opening. Um, the, the day is not about us. It's about the bride, and we're not even second. Then it's about the audience. The audience doesn't want to see this. Okay, guys, come on, come on. <laughs> so I've seen some big guys take up the whole aisle. Um, no, because then the, what, what, the bride's going to trip over you as well. Okay, so where were we? Uh, two tripods either side. Does that pretty much cover that? Oh, yes, two photographers. Um, Okay, if photographers, if you're watching, um, like I said, we have this conversation every, every weekend. Um, I know vid some videographers out there must be terrible as well. And I know this just from the look of your face, photographer, when you see me at a ceremony, if we haven't seen each other already, just the look of horrors. Oh my God, there's a videographer there. Oh, last videographer. He ruined everything. Or he put three tripods everywhere, including in the middle of the aisle. So, I, know, I understand there's stigma either way, but a quick conversation will allay any fears that we can both work together, I hate saying it, as a team, because I've seen some real shit people use that excuse. Yeah, but we work together as a team. Right after they destroyed my whole, my whole wedding. And the people who destroy weddings, they're always in pairs. There'll be a husband and wife, or like a couple of weeks ago, there was these two girls. <laughs> right. And I think there's a little bit of, maybe there's bandwidth, or maybe there's some dedication to like, I like this lens and my partner likes this lens. So they'll, they're just getting used to doing weddings in that way. Um, I'll just continue as a plane goes overhead. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, by the way, you can never tell a photographer what to do. Just by the fact that they're already here, I'm quite experienced, we're getting good weddings. Usually the photographer that turns up is experienced as well. And it doesn't matter if they've had two years experience or they used to do fashion or they've got 10 years wedding experience or last week's one he had 16 years experience. They have one thing in common and that is 
they know what to do with it. This is the only way they know what to do. This is the only way you should do it, I mean. So you can't tell them anything. You've always got to nod and go, yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. Oh, yeah, your Zooms are terrible. Oh, yeah, Primes, I oh, just can't do it. Oh, yeah, true, true, 70 to 200. Oh, yeah, of course you can't do without it. And then one of my mates, oh, oh yeah, 70, oh, looks, looks like you're voyeuristic. You want to be in the action, and I'm always, I'll always agree. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all fine. A lot of that's personal choice. But some things actually ruin my wedding. And I know that was long-winded, but you just, you got to hear that. Everybody, photographers, videographers. When there's two, you don't take both prime positions. This is the first big no-no. So lovely husband and wife team, and I, I really liked them. And I was not about to say, by the way, um, you guys are great, but you stuffed up my wedding, my footage. Um, one of them would be here in the prime position. And like I said, I'm willing to give that up bridegroom but then the second the husband whatever was blocking this camera as well and I just didn't know what to do so I think I just um, forfeited the groom's shot and I just got my bride walking down um, the other thing a second photographer does is follow the bride down the aisle as she's walking and I don't know do you really need that shot because in everyone else's shot including your partner they're getting you in the frame so i know you get the back of the dress but she will eventually walk down the aisle and she'll eventually you know um dad will shake groom's hand and whatnot you'll see the back of the dress then you can be like you'll get the photo right then she'll pass you then you've got the back of the dress so i would suggest how important is that shot um if it really is important um, I've seen one guy, it was brilliant, he had a, like a 100 to 400 and he was able to get something off to the side and still kind of get it without being like, you know, in that 35 mil, 24 mil range and being right in my frame. So yeah, two photographers is more of a nightmare, not always, but it's a nightmare when they turn up and don't talk. Because, oh no, there's a videographer. They'll turn up straight away, they know everything, so they have that certain you know, personality about them, they won't even bother talking about how to improve or they definitely won't hear it from a videographer. They'll just go ahead and do how they do it. And one more example, I know I'm, I know I'm rabbiting on, I'm conscious of that. There's one guy, I, yeah, well, let's just say, there's this one guy and he likes to stand as the bride comes in. If, if the groom is here, he likes to stand behind the groom and get like over the shoulder of, of the bride coming down and that's cool and all I'd appreciate that photo and whatever but he is now in my shot so now I've got a shot of a groom waiting for the bride with this dude standing behind going like this and it's just ugly and he's this guy that keeps doing it I hope I don't have to shoot with him again I mean everything else is fine but I think I started that conversation once and you've only got five, ten minutes um, to appeal to someone in that professional way. Like, hey, like, um, what if you were here and here? Just, this, just that look of, are you, are you fucking kidding? I am the photographer, you know, like, I am, I know what I'm doing. Just that look on his face, and I'm, I'm pretty good at reading faces. I can start that convo and then dial it back and go, actually, don't worry, that's cool. And I'll forfeit that shot. I'll try to zoom in on the, on the groom. As a solo shooter, this is a very good point, as a solo shooter zooming in to a groom to about here, even if he moves a bit, you know, like you've lost your shot. So just quick, I don't want to cover every topic, just where to stand in this one. Um, this camera, where is it? This one here, the second camera of the groom should be bare minimum. Uh, knee length, um, 4K, you can get a, a lot of resolution out of that anyway. About here, where I'm standing now, is this is ideal, um, if I can get it, and I know he's not going to move. But quite often, I'll settle for that. So you are going to see things in the frame, and that's fine. Um, I do crop in a little bit, deliver 1080 sometimes. Okay, well, I think that's it. Like I said, my, my preference is just using these two things because I only, only have to carry those two things. But I will have always a second tripod in the car, and I'm always carrying my gimbal. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the ceremony. Right, so towards the end of the ceremony. Okay, so we've done the vows. We've got the shot either side. Then 
For the rings, and this is again why I love using the monopod, I do like to have my second camera facing the bride because it's a kiss shot and I don't really want to have a close up of the guy kissing. I, I like the bride. Um, so it'd be good actually to always have the second camera on that side. I've started doing that more often. So after the vows is finished and hopefully people clap and give me 30 seconds, I'll grab my monopod and I'll run around to the center of the aisle, back a little bit, leave some room for the photographers and then I'll do the rings from here and the kiss. Okay. Um, by the way, when doing all these shots, autofocus is obviously fine, but have a little toggle to, to manually lock that off. Get your shot, put it somewhere. If you can't see the face, lock it onto the shoulder, hit the manual um, autofocus off. I've got a little shortcut on the down button of both of my cameras. And that way I can leave that again and adjust the second camera if needed. Um, so that's the vows and then a kiss. Yay, everyone claps. And to wrap it up, I'll go and get my gimbal. But, and this is another reason why leaving this second, cam this second tripod here is good. There'll be a signing. So then I'll run over here. Um, it's not the best shot in the world because it's low priority to me, to be honest. I will set up where they're signing. If the photographer gets in the way of that, I've, I've letting go more and more and I've done this for eight years now. That's fine. It's facing the signature, uh, the signing of the certificate. Then that lets me have like a few minutes to pack this up and look how fast it is. Take this camera off and you can have three cameras if you want. I don't like it. I like having two. Then put the a hero camera on a gimbal. And usually I can do that with minutes to spare and get some crowd shots. Now, when they're finished signing, they'll stand in the middle again. And I might turn this one around. Now this is very low priority. Quite often this has sound on it though, so I'd, you know, I'd like to face it towards where the sound's coming from. Um, point that, widen it up, point that to everybody. And then with my gimbal, I'm now ready for the welcoming of, you know, the new couple. And then they exit. Um, well, the announcement, sorry, of the new couple, and then they exit this way, flowers, whatnot, and the gimbal is the best way to get that shot. You can go handheld. I think this is a moment where creatively either or is fine. So technically you could get away with two tripods and handheld. I sometimes do monopod, tripod, handheld. I've done that before. The monopod, once again, this guy, comes in super handy in little chapels. Sometimes a little chapel has no room on the side to put your tripod. And then, like you're stuffed. Without this, you can't do it. I recommend going to get this. Sponsor me, Sirui. Standalone tripod. Worst case scenario, if there's no room on the side, you're gonna have to tell the groomsmen or the bridesmaids, hey, look, sorry. Um, I'm gonna have to just come in here and you, I crouch down and I go, Oh, look, look, sorry guys, and I'll get my bride's shot, flip my, my screen down, and leave it there like that, lock it, and I've got my shot. I thought everyone would do something like that, but I've had lots of different shooters I've had to edit, and no one makes this little uh, commitment, and it's not getting in the way, I'm not contradicting myself, I'm not standing there with a big tripod saying, ah, uh, piss off uh, groomsmen, whatever, I'm just gonna stand here. I just quickly say, Look, I need to be here. I don't even, they just know. I'll quickly come here, have an apologetic look to people, set up my screen, and then I'll get my shot. Um, if there's no room at all, then the second camera, I'm not sure what, what you would do. Probably something similar on that side. But once again, the second camera is always there. So it's a bit more forgiving. People then tend to sit around it. I think I've covered everything. That's good, I'm surprised. Um, it's a bit frenetic, this one. It's very off the cuff, not scripted. Hope I didn't repeat myself too much. Now, I know, knowing me, I've probably forgotten something. And if I have, we'll continue this in the comments or in following videos. But I reckon for now, that's enough, um, at least to get the conversation started. I mean, it'd, it'd be great if photographers watched a video like this or something similar. I'm not saying everyone should do it my way, but in my eight years, I found this works. 
Um, I'll never use a shoulder rig for a wedding. Um, shoulder rigs look like it's behind the scenes. And I don't want behind the scenes. I want the scene, I want the shot. Shoulder rigs always look like you in better homes and gardens. Those are just my opinions. Um, love you photographers and fellow shooters. Good luck shooting everyone. I'm gonna leave it there. All right, hope it wasn't too negative, but I love you all. All right, okay, and I'll see you on the next video. All right, bye.